My name's Andy. I've um, been working with the team here. So every day at 10 o'clock in the morning, we've been doing the work that reconnects for two hours. And uh, I also do retreats in nature. And um, so I'm gonna say a bit in these um, kind of 19 and a half minutes about, um, yeah, I suppose with that theme of the festival, evolution or extinction, like how we can face that as human, be as human beings alive in the world right now. It feels such a big thing to face. And uh, I'm going to start, there's two objects I'm bringing to this, uh, to this talk. A stone um, and a very mysterious cup. And I'm going to start with the stone. So I um, took this stone from a beach in Samos, which is in Greece. And I was looking out over the like amazing expanse of the sea. And you can see Turkey from Samos. It's less than two miles away. And I was thinking of people on the other side in Turkey looking back at Samos. And thousands and thousands and thousands of people are looking at Samos, dreaming, like really dreaming to get there and risking their lives in like awful boats and risking the lives of their families to get just to where I was. And I was, I was volunteering at a refugee camp and it was a huge amount of suffering, the conditions they were facing. I mean, that trip, that, that two miles is so dangerous. And you think that's a feat, you should be treated like heroes, right? When you, when you do that. But you, you, those refugees arrived and were prisoners, went straight to prison. And what I witnessed in my short time there was how some people really turned away, understandably, from that amount of suffering. So getting lost in violence, in drinking, in drugs, um, you know, the boredom, that there's so much there that is very, very hard to deal with. But I also saw people turning even in that situation, you know, to this like really extreme suffering, I saw people turning towards. And one person like really, like I could just really in my heart was a lady called Majida, Majida Ali, who's been a refugee all her life, all her life. She's, she was born in Palestine and went to Syria. Now she's in Samos. And she said to me, she said, like, Andy, I don't need to, like, live in a palace. I, I can live in a tent. I can live in a house. It really doesn't matter to me. What matters is I make people smile. What matters is I can bring joy and love to people. And within a few days of that journey, she wasn't thinking about herself, she was thinking about all the children and the fact they didn't have any school. And everyone was saying, we can't, you know, how can we start a school? She's just started one within two days. She had like 30, 40 kids around her with no resources, no materials. And she turned towards her situation and she just did what was ever in her means, you know, whatever felt true to her. And now that school has become this huge educational centre that I was a part of with 20 international volunteers making you know, a real difference to people's lives. And it just stuck with me, you know, that it's like almost the dreams of the beach with all these rocks, that you really can make a difference no matter what you're facing. So yeah, that's Majida, that's the rock. And then this is also from Samos. It's a, it's a picture of Pythagoras, 
with his beard, because that's where he was born as well. It's quite the Samos. Now, is anyone thirsty and would like a drink of like amazing Stroud spring water? Oh, brilliant. Okay. <laughs> okay, do you want to do one coming up? <laughs> okay, great. What's your name? Kate. Kate, hi Kate. Thanks for coming up to the stage. It's, um, <laughs> is it a trick? We'll find out. So there's, you're all totally safe. Okay. <laughs> there's a line in this cup that's in the middle. You might not see it. It's like three quarters of the way up. And Pythagoras used this cup to show what happens if you do things in excess. He was actually using it, telling his students not to drink too much. So he would say like, what could happen if you drink too much? So I'm filling this up below this line. So the line's there, the water level's now here, okay? It's okay. You can enjoy, quench your thirst. So, you know, it's a good functioning cup. Right, so now this is what happens if I fill it up above the line. <laughs> That's right. So what happened, thanks Kate, right? Yeah, you can go. Yeah, a round of applause. So what happened there is like, not only did the water um, come out of this incredible hole, <laughs> more water, um, came out of this hole when it went above that line, but it actually kept on going. So all the way to the bottom. So that is the kind of symbolism of what happens if you're doing things to excess, you just like lose it all. And it's how I see and what a lot of people in this world of, you know, people here like want to make a difference, want to change things. And there's that spark of enthusiasm, isn't there? When we first kind of, uh, creating change, doing things, things are going well. But also what's very common is the burnout. That when we're up against so much and like there's so much resistance to change and we're just like, can keep on getting negativity, keep on getting negativity. It just seems like things are getting worse and worse and worse. Like you can very easily, if you don't resource yourself, the whole thing goes, doesn't it? And you can just like, you can just lose it all. And you're not this, you're not in your power as a change maker. And that's how I see the work that reconnects. It's a tool that helps you and the collective helps like community to resource themselves. And it's something I do uh, regularly in where I'm from in Stroud. So I'm just checking the time, all right, okay. Um, eight, nine minutes. So, um, so, what is the work that reconnects? It's a body of work designed by Joanna Macy, who is a Buddhist, uh, an activist, peace activist, uh, designed 42 years ago. And I think the first thing it does for me is it helps you really connect to what's really, really important to you. And that can change so quickly, can't it? Because it changes all the time in a way. And rather than talk about that, I'm actually, I think it's better to experience it because this work is all experiential. So this is gonna be a very quick, like mini, mini experience of one part of work that reconnects, which tends to be open sentences rather than like trying to grapple with questions, open sentences. So if you can like turn to a partner, if, if everyone can just turn to someone um, and say a nice hello. <laughs> and now decide which one of you has longer hair. Okay? Is 
so that person is going to speak first and the other person is just going to listen and witness. And that's an amazing thing to like give all your attention or as much attention as possible to what this person in front of you, maybe you know them, maybe you don't, what they're saying. And the person that's speaking, and I'll, I'll, I'll do a ding when the time is up. So it's only going to be probably 45 seconds. <laughs> so it's going to be short. It's going to finish this open sentence and just keep repeating the words, keep repeating the words. And just see what comes up and just try and just not think about it. Just see what literally comes intuitively, what comes almost like from that heart space. Okay, so that open sentence is... No, no, I'm about to say the sentence. Sorry, yeah. So the open sentence, and then that one person just speaks from the heart, the other person just listens. That one sentence, and you can keep on repeating the sentence as well. The love in me longs for. The love in me longs for. And just see what comes up. Okay, and just come back to yourself, come back to your body, back to the earth, take a deep breath in and out, and now the s second person swap around, the love in me longs for. And thank your partner for what's been shared. And just a few words. If people just want to shout out literally just a word or two of how that made you feel. How was that? Positive. <coughs> Positive, connected. Moved. Surprised. Surprised. Alive. Alive. Warm. Warm. Centered. 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 Loved. Confused. Understood. Understood. Tearful. Tearful. And it can bring up a lot of mixed emotions as you know as we're hearing. And it can bring up tears. This work often does. Um, because what we've just done actually is is what this work's founded on in a, in a way is starting from gratitude, starting with what we love. And when we tune in to what we love, so often that can lead, lead to grief for what we're losing. And that's really a big core part of this work is honoring our pain for the world. And it's kind of the second part that this, this work goes from gratitude 
to honouring our pain. It's kind of, it's a very kind of, it's a sequential piece of work, a, a spiral. And, you know, just take a moment now, like, I suppose when Joan Anna Macy designed this work 42 years ago, she just came to this realisation that our species is destroying life and our species is destroying itself. And she asked, how can I live in full presence and enjoy life when my species is destroying life? And so what does it mean to live now when we know of so much of this extinction side of you know, the, the theme of the festival. And you know, how does that actually feel within us? And what words are coming up now when you're connecting to that? Scared. Despair. Angry. Resentment. Resignation. Helpless and overwhelmed. Sorry? Regret. Empowered. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, empowered. Sad. Shame. So I'm going to leave it there, but the um, the energy has shifted so much, hasn't it, from the gratitude to the honouring our pain. But you know, and I think you've really got to be in a whole workshop to experience this. There is an empowerment that most people feel. That when we turn towards our pain, all that part of us that is just turning away all the time, suddenly we can let that go and actually stand with others in a supported, held space to really feel how we're, just how we're feeling, what we're carrying. And there's another part of the spiral. Oh, in two minutes. I've got two minutes, okay. I'm gonna quickly show you the other part of the spiral. Actually, do you mind? It's on the brown. Because uh, another big part of this work is seeing with, seeing with new eyes. Because we're not alone in this work. We are with our ancestors. We are with um, all the beings of life. And we do this for future generations. And this is part of where we go through on our pain to seeing with new eyes. We, we really connect to the interconnected web of life. And we go forward with power. And what I like to say in my last minute is about active hope. This is what Joanna Macy called one of her books. Uh, how to f feel the mess we're in without going crazy. That's the byline. Because hope is a choice. There's two sides of hope. Hope can be like, you know, the hopelessness because I'm not going to get the outcome I want. And that's a kind of passive hope. Active hope is the intention of, it's like, I'm going to go back to Majida where I started. It's like, I, don't, I can't solve the refugee crisis, but I'm going to put my energy to what I feel is true to me. I'm going to activate my hope and just make a small bit of difference in my little world. And I feel this is what this work empowers you to do. It just provide, it activates that part of you. And you go forth, my experience is then you go forth with that renewal that will stop the burnout.